ஒன்ஸ்டேஷன் <laughs> Once again, to find the main dimensions of uh, uh, 2500 kVA, 187.5 RPM, three-phase, silent pole synchronous generator. The, gener- uh, the generator is to be vertical water wheel type. Vertical water wheel type, definitely a hydro uh, turbine. Uh, vertical water wheel type. Uh, the specific magnetic loading is 0.6 Weber per meter square. And specific electrical loading is uh, 34,000 ampere conductor per meter. Use circular poles, use circular poles with the ratio of core length to pole pitch. Core length to pole pitch is equal to 0.65. Specify the type of pole construction used if runaway speed is about two times the uh, two times of normal speed. So first time, uh, the use, uh, uh, as usual, uh, they ask DADEN and they put the condition here, use circular poles. Circular poles means what? This pole. This is, this is called as a, a circular pole. Where the speed, uh, if you use this type of pole as a rotor drum, uh, then uh, the speed of the road car will be around 60 meter per second. Use circular poles, and then uh, specific type of uh, type of pole construction used. If runaway speed is about two times the normal speed, if runaway speed is uh, two times the normal speed, first try to calculate. We try to calculate the what is the runaway speed, uh, what, what will be peripheral speed. Then you calculate twice of the peripheral speed. Along with that, you will try to calculate the end. Yes. Now same thing, main dimension. First part of your question is what we have to calculate D and L. Main dimension means normal D and L. Okay. Uh, so product D square L, uh, Q divided by, uh, there is no efficiency here, uh, just uh, cancel this one. There is no efficiency here, D square L is equal to Q divided by C naught NS, uh, C naught NS, no efficiency here, uh, just uh, any of our next time we'll update uh, in the notes, uh, just uh, cancel this eta efficiency. So, D square, D square L is equal to Q divided by C naught into NS, okay? Where uh, output of your alternative will be in KVA, KVA divided by C naught into NS. Once again, I repeat, there, there is no eta here, if you can say. Next time when I update the notes, I will just delete this uh, eta. Uh, KVA divided by uh, C naught NS. Let us calculate NS now. Synchronous speed per second. Uh, so, it has given what is the speed here? It is given 180, 187.5 RPM, so the convert into seconds. So 187.5 divided by 60, what do you get here? 3.12 RPS. Once you don't, uh, if you see the problem, they're not given pole. So I'll try to calculate the pole. Uh, so P is equal to using the same relation, uh, uh, F into 2 divided by NS. P is equal to F into 2 divided by NS, F into 2 divided by 3.12. What do you get here? 32. Then once again, you find out C naught output coefficient. 11 BAB Q is KW into 10 power minus 3. Once again, here KV is not given, uh, means the voltage factor is not given. Uh, you uh, uh, select same thing, 0.955. Okay. Almost for every problem, you have, to, uh, you have selected same value, uh, 0.955. If the problem is not specified, it takes same value. So 11 BAV, uh, 11 BAV is, uh, BAV is something but 0.6, Q is something but 34,000. Uh, KW 0.955 into 10 power minus 3. Uh, it, it come around uh, to 14.30. Once you find out output coefficient, uh, then you got product here. Product D square is equal to Q divided by C naught NS. Substitute for C naught and substitute for uh, uh, Q, Q is given in what? Uh, 2500. And uh, uh, C naught uh, 214.30 into NS. NS is 3.125. So when you, when you do this one, what you get here? 3.733 meters square. Same, same thing. It has equation form. For uh, circular round pose, once again, L by tau ratio. Core length by pole pitch is, is equal to 0.65. L by tau 0.65. Yeah, then calculate for L here. So L is equal to 0.0638 D. 0.0638 D. Equation 2. So substitute, uh, substituting for L uh, from equation 2 to in equation 1, then you can calculate what? D and L. So D you get around 3.88 M and L is equal to 0.25 M. So normally if you try to 
uh, try to compare D and Dell uh, with respect to alternator and with respect to induction motor. D and Dell, there will be minimum. Almost a D and Dell in the, in, in the case of induction motor will be in uh, like a 0.2 meter, 0.3 meter. Rarely it go above one. But here in alternator, definitely D will be above. Uh, means D will be more than one, two or three level. D is equal to 3.88 mm and L is equal to 0.25 uh, meter. Once you uh, once you have found a D and Dell, they told that uh, they uh, they have told that use circular pole, use circular pole. So use circular pole. Now let, let us uh, try to calculate the peripheral speed. Peripheral speed V is, is given by what? By D and S. Uh, so pi into D, 3.88 into N S. So what you got here? Peripheral speed is what you got here? 38.1 meter per second. So 38.1 meter per second. If you go to the problem, uh, you can see here. A uh, specific type of pole construction used if runaway speed is uh, about two times the normal speed. Now, what is the speed now? What you calculate the speed? 38.1 into two times. In two times means multiply by two. Multiply into two. 38.1 into two means you will get around uh, 76. Uh, 76 means around around uh, uh, 18 meter per second. Around 76 meter per second. So the runaway peripheral speed will be about about uh, 76.4. We round up to 80. So 80 meter per second. So 80 meter per second means I can't use what? I can't use circular poles. They are given that circular poles and they are given the condition that uh, the peripheral speed will be twice the normal uh, speed. So if you calculate this peripheral speed, it's come around 38.1 into 2, it, it will come around 76.4, means approximately equal to 80 meter per second. So the runaway peripheral speed will be about 80 meter per second or 76.4 uh, meter per second. And therefore, we can't use what? We can't use circular uh, a pole structure. Therefore, dowel tail construction is used for attaching the rotor post to the rim. Rim means nothing but your rotor drum. So dowel tail. You come back to here. Dowel tail uh, construction means what? This is a dowel tail construction. This is a dowel tail construction of poles. What is the speed? You can see here. You can see the speed here for dowel tail and T head construction, 80 meter per second. So uh, based in, based on the given condition, the problem. I can't use circular poles, but what we can use because the speed exceeds uh, more than 60 meter per second, where the 60 meter per second is the speed of circular poles. So I can't use circular poles. So what I can do, I can use dowel construction instead of circular poles. Okay, this is the solution of the problem. Once again, I tell you, uh, just if you didn't get the point, uh, please unmute and you can always uh, ask the question. So this is a simple problem. They asked for 10 marks uh, within uh, five minutes or four minutes, four minutes, you can do this problem. A simple, easier problem. Okay, so there in this problem, there is D and L uh, along with that. Uh, uh, based on the condition given here, the nervous speed, which type of a pole, which type of pole construction will be suitable for uh, this type of alternate for this alternator given the problem. Okay, let us go to the next problem. In a similar type, similar type of problems. Let us see. Determine the main dimensions of uh, 1000 kVA, uh, 50 years, 3 phase, 375 rpm alternator. The average gap, uh, air gap density is uh, 0.55 per, per meter square, and AC per meter is AC uh, ampere conductor 28,000. Yeah, there, you give, uh, there, there. Uh, the, what is the condition given here? Use rectangular poles and a suitable value of ratio of pole into pole pitch. They told here you, you can use rectangular poles, but they're not given uh, L by uh, L by tau ratio. Uh, means uh, pole into pole pitch ratio. You have to assume it. The maximum permissible peripheral speed is 15 meter per second. And the runaway speed is what? 1.8 times the synchronous speed. The runaway speed will be what? Uh, uh, 1.8 times the synchronous speed. And they are given that the maximum permissible peripheral speed is uh, 15 meter per second. And, uh, and the runaway speed is what? 1.8 times the synchronous speed. Let us calculate here. First, I use rectangular pose and assume that suitable value of uh, ratio of core length to whole pitch. If you go to rectangular pole here, once again, uh, what we did the theory for rectangular pose, you can see uh, the ratio of polar or polar to pole pitch are uh, nothing but uh, polar is nothing but this, this is called as polar. Normally, you will get the pole, uh, what you can get. Uh, okay, later, uh, uh, this is this is what we call this is called as a polar. Leave it. <laughs> Between uh, the L by tau ratio, uh, so L by tau ratio means the length of the pole divided by tau. Uh, uh, Divided by tau ratio is equal to one point so five. So then they are not given. They are told that you can use rectangular poles, but they are not given exact value of L by tau. So it lies between what one to five. In between this uh, value, you can make an assumption one to five. Now what the condition given? 
the speed uh, should be what within 15 meter per second so you have to select uh, the elevator in such a way that the peripheral speed uh, should be what it should be 50 per second okay now. so let us uh, make assumption here uh, second problem yeah, okay so what I did here, uh, because uh, for uh, rectangular pose it uh, lies between uh, 1 to 5, so what I did here, I have taken L by 2 is equal to 2. I have taken L by 2 is equal to 2, then uh, once again same procedure, calculate L and you calculate D and what you got here, D, D is equal to 1.36 meter and what you got L, uh, so L is equal to 0.53 meter. So let us calculate a peripheral speed. So V is equal to what now? Pi D in S, so Pi into D, D is 1.36. And NS is something what 6.25. So, what do you got here? 6.25. Once you calculate, you can see here, peripheral speed is what? 26.70. 26.70 uh, meter per second. So, uh, the, the speed is what? The speed is within the limit. Means, what is the limit here? 50 meter per second. The one more condition they have given. The runaway speed is 1.8 times the synchronous speed. The maximum perm uh, permissible uh, peripheral speed is uh, 50 meter per second. So, this uh, generator. Uh, this alternator uh, speed, uh, the rotor of this alternator should not crash what should not crash this 50 meter per second. And one more direction is given the runaway speed is 1.8 times. So, what is the meaning of this one? Means the runaway speed is 1.8 times synchronous speed. Means uh, whenever the load reduces, uh, whenever the load on the alternator reduces, then definitely the speed of the alternator increases. How much it increases? That the speed of the alternator increases is nothing but your runaway speed. So, how much time it increases? 1.8 times it increases. Let us see now. Now, so we have calculated what? Peripheral speed 26.70. Now, runaway speed is 1.8 times. So, you calculate here 1.8 into 26. 1.8 into 26, what you get here? 48, uh, 48 meter per second. So, 48 meter per second is within the, within the uh, maximum permissible uh, speed limit. So, even when the load is uh, decreased, uh, the speed of the alternator remains what? The, the speed of the alternator remains within the uh, within the permissible speed of 50 meter per second. Okay. Even when the load is uh, decreased, uh, the runaway speed uh, the runaway speed is what now? 48 uh, 48 meter per second, uh, which is within the range of 50 meter per second. So this is below 50 meter per second, and therefore simple bolted and pole construction can be used. So for this uh, 48 meter per second, uh, what you can go? Here we, uh, here we use rectangular, here we use what? Rectangular pose. In the rectangular, rectangular pose, we have uh, two different types of rectangular pose. So speed is uh, 48, uh, 48 meter per second. For 48 meter per second, okay, these are called as what? These are called as a rectangular pose. These, these three are called as rectangular pose. Okay. So for 48 meter per second, uh, we can see here, bolted and pole conception. What is the speed here? Maximum is 50 meter per second. So what you can, since we got 48 meter per second, uh, uh, what is the condition given here? 50 meter per second. So uh, the speed of the uh, the speed of the rotor, even when the uh, load is decreased, uh, when the load is decreased, the runaway speed comes under 40, uh, 48 meter per second. So what which type of uh, pole construction we can use? We can use bolted or pole construction. Bolted or pole construction. These are these are all these are three types of rectangular poles. Okay. So you can use what bolted or pole construction. Okay. Uh, you can uh, finally you can uh, give the final statement uh, the runaway speed is uh, the the runaway speed is uh, come around okay the runaway speed okay is 1.8 times it come over 48 point uh, meter per second this is below 50 meter per second and therefore a simple bolted and pole construction can be used okay this is solution for a uh, second uh, the solution will be simple uh, compared to industrial motor okay Okay, now we'll come to uh, one more type of problem, uh, one more example uh, with uh, this type of problem. Okay, now let us see. Find the main dimensions of 100 MVA. Always take care because output equation will be in KVA. If they get MVA means you have to multiply one second with 10 power minus 3. Always check this one, whether it is given in KVA or MVA. If they get MVA means then you have to multiply by 10 power 3. Find the main dimensions of 100 MVA. 11 kilovolt, 50 hertz, 150 rpm, three phase water wheel generator. The average uh, air gap uh, flux density 0.655 and ampere current per meter 40,000. Uh, the peripheral speed should not exceed 65 meter per second at, nor at normal running speed in order to limit the runaway 
very fine split okay here uh, what they given the condition along with d and l uh, you can catch a d and l and they given that the peripheral speed should not exceed 65 meter per second but uh, they not given what the, what they not given which type of pole construction uh, which type of uh, poles for rotor should be used so you know that uh, we have three type of uh, rotor poles round circular poles rectangular poles okay round circular poles and we have a rectangular poles which type of uh, poles you should use whether you go for round poles or you go for rectangular poles and you see that uh, what is the condition the peripheral speed should not exceed 65 meter per second anyone you can you, you can make assumption if you want to make assumption of circular poles you can make assumption or if you want to use a rectangular poles you can use rectangular poles Uh, and see that, and uh, then finally you find out what? Find out the peripheral speed. If peripheral speed uh, is within the 65 meter per second, then what you may as a fact is correct. Uh, if your uh, peripheral speed is not 65 meter per second, then what you may as a fact is wrong. Then you go for different another type of pole construction. Let us see now what we have done. Same thing. Uh, main dimension product d square l. Uh, d square l is equal to what q divided by c not n s. Uh, once again, change this one. Uh, change this one. Uh, efficiency is not there. Uh, KVA C not N S. Uh, once again, uh, uh, speed you calculate uh, N S one fifty by sixty. Uh, uh, number of poles you calculate. Output coefficient eleven BAB Q indicated by ten power minus three. Uh, so BAB is point six five. Q is equal to forty thousand and point nine five five. Once again, here KW is not given as usual. Uh, you make a statement of point nine five five to ten power minus three. So output coefficient at two seventy three point one three and calculate uh, d square l product. Uh, okay, that is equation one. And here, uh, what you have, what I have done is I have make assumption of circular poles. Likewise, if you want, you can make assumption of rectangular poles and check for the condition for speed, the peripheral speed. It should not exceed sixty five meter per second. Now for circular poles, I have taken here I have taken all circular poles, core length to pole pitch. Here uh, for circular poles, the core length of pole pitch L by two. Uh, for L by two, if you see for circular poles, the circular poles here uh, L by two. If you see here L by two, where is between what? Point six to point seven. Within that range, you can take it. Point six to point seven. So in this uh, third problem, what I have done, I have taken L by two. L by two is equal to point six five. In between, between value I have taken L by two is equal to point six five. And you try to solve this one as usual. L is equal to zero point zero five one one zero d, and uh, calculate uh, d and l. And d what you got here fourteen point two one meter, and what you got l here two point one four meter. You can see here in the in, once again I'll repeat in induction motor d and l will be always always will be in uh, almost uh, like uh, in a fraction. A fraction means point five to point three point two. Rarely it will come above one, but in alternator d and l will be more. Okay. Fourteen point two one are eligible to point one four. Okay, uh, that you make a change in uh, designing the condition motor. Suppose you got like a two point one three or three point one three, somewhere you have done wrong there. Okay, so uh, we are we are calculating here. D is equal to fourteen point two one, L is equal to two point one four. Let's check, uh, check for peripheral speed. V is equal to pi d n s. What is pi n? Pi is equal to fourteen point two one. What is n s? Two point five. You can check here. One 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 point six zero meter per second. The peripheral speed is under eleven point six zero meter per second, which exceeds the the maximal permissible limit. What is the maximum permissible uh, permissible limit given? Sixty five meter per second. Should not exceed sixty five meter per second. So here, if you see, we have calculated the speed, uh, which is under eleven point six zero, which exceeds the sixty five meter per second. So what I can do? I can't use now what I can't use circular poles because for circular poles the maximum speed is around sixty meter per second. In the problem, it has given as sixty five meter per second. No problem. Should not exceed. So what I can what what I can tell? I can't use what I can't use circular poles. So I can give a statement that peripheral speed is uh, around 11.60 meter per second, which is above the maximum permissible value of 65 meter per second. And uh, therefore, and therefore, circular poles cannot be used for this speed. Instead of circular poles, rectangular poles are employed. So uh, I can't use uh, for this speed. For this speed, I can't use what the speed will be what under 11.60, 60 based on our D and L value. So for this speed, I can't use circular poles. So what I can use, I can use instead of circular poles, I can use the rectangular poles. I can use rectangular poles. Rectangular poles means I can go for what? I can go for uh, this this a doubt K T H concept, which is the speed is what 
So it will be what 18 meter per second. I can use any rectangular pose. Okay. I can't use what I can't use circular pose because circular pose the maximum speed is around 60 meter per second. Okay. Suppose uh, I, I have taken circular pose. Likewise, some other students have taken directly rectangular pose. Uh, suppose here I have taken uh, uh, what uh, circular pose. But uh, any other students have taken rectangular pose. And he has taken Alberto ratio, he has taken a rectangular pose, you know that it lies between uh, 1 to 5. Any, any between the uh, 1 to 5, it will take some values and it will calculate. And if the speed comes uh, within that uh, 65 meter per second, then what he has done is correct. Then he, he can stick on to that rectangular pose. Likewise, uh, since I have taken a circular pose, uh, so I can't use circular pose for this speed. I must use instead of circular pose, I must use what? I must use the rectangular pose. This is what uh, one type of problems okay, which will uh, appear uh, uh, appear in the uh, what uh, in updated design. That is first part, first part of the uh, first part of your question paper. And just you have learned this. You have learned in a synchronous machine uh, by studying the machines, uh, resynchronous and synchronous uh, machine. And even you have done uh, suppose if you even you have done uh, uh, SCR SCR circuit ratio in the lab also. Let us see. Uh, normally, this, uh, this question arises for uh, the, uh, theory questions. Uh, define a source circuit ratio of synchronous, uh, synchronous machine. A source circuit ratio means SCR. In short form, you can call it as SCR. Source circuit ratio of synchronous machine SCR. As applied to synchronous machine, what are the effects of SCR on machine performance? Because uh, any question will have one theory question and one problematic, uh, one problematic. So these are the theory questions. Either they may ask the output equation, or either they may ask, uh, these are the theory questions. Uh, they may ask based on SCR. And what are the effects of SCR on the machine performance? Okay. So the, I think uh, this, uh, these things you already learned uh, in uh, synchronous machine. Uh, what is SCR? So SCR is something but what the source circuit ratio of synchronous machine defined as a ratio of field current required to produce rated field current required to produce a rated voltage on open circuit. Uh, to field current uh, required to circulate a rated, uh, at a rated current at source circuit. So normally you are going to do OCC and SEC and the alternator. OCC and SEC and the alternator. Means OCC test and a source circuit test. So uh, OCC is nothing but one, open circuit test. Okay, if you remember this figure, I think everyone remember. Uh, so you are going to conduct the OCC test and you are going to conduct the source circuit test, uh, source circuit current test and you are going to plot it. Now you can see here, uh, this is the x-axis, x-axis is nothing but a field current. Field current means you are going to exit the field current, okay? Field current is nothing but what? Field is nothing but your rotor. Because the rotor, we have the windings, you are going to exit that uh, uh, field winding and try to bring uh, uh, bring uh, bring the alternator to return speed. So this is field current and here uh, this is a per unit voltage. This is nothing but your voltage, uh, x, uh, y-axis. Likewise, you have here per unit source circuit current. So first you what you do, uh, first uh, you, you can what you, you can conduct the open circuit, uh, open circuit characteristics or open circuit uh, test. So normally you try to increase the field current such that uh, your alternator will run at the almost rated speed. So I have taken per unit here, the rated speed. So one, whatever the rated speed, one, just you calculate uh, for rated speed, uh, I have taken per unit voltage here, one, rated voltage, uh, for rated voltage, uh, just it cuts the OCC curve. And the corresponding will be what? The corresponding will be a field current at open circuit. Uh, field current at uh, open circuit. Likewise, uh, you, uh, or you, carry, you carry out the source circuit current. Uh, source circuit current is meant to circuit all the rotor windings. Uh, source circuited and try to pass what? Try to pass the current. Source circuit current. When you pass the source circuit, uh, source circuit current, uh, then what will happen here? Means in, uh, in SCC, what you will do, you are going to start circuit all these uh, set of windings and you will try to pass the start circuit current. When you pass the start circuit current, such that the rated start circuit current flows. I mean, normally, a rated start circuit current will be what? Uh, around uh, 2.5 times or 3 times the rated current. Means you are going to pass around more than 2 times the rated current. Okay? So, per unit start circuit current, means you are going to, going to increase the field current, such that the rated start circuit current flows. Uh, at that, uh, so take that value, it cuts your SEC and uh, you drop down that uh, value to the uh, what, field current. And this is called as what? This is called as IFSC, field current under source circuit condition. Once you found out IFSC, uh, field current in source circuit condition and uh, field current in open circuit condition. Then uh, after drawing this graph, you can find out IFSC and IFOC, field current and open circuit, 
build the entire SaaS circuit. Then what is the CR? As I told, uh, CR is nothing but what uh, uh, defined as a ratio of field current required to produce a ratio of field current required a ratio of field current required to produce a open circuit voltage, open circuit rated voltage, and field current uh, field current required uh, required to produce a SaaS circuit current. Okay, to the field current required to circulate the rated SaaS circuit current. So Field current required to produce a rated open circuit voltage and field current required to produce a rated SAS circuit current. Okay, so let's think about what now? IFOC, I, this is IFOC divided by what? IFSC. So here uh, I can tell uh, IFOC now, you know, you can take this uh, this triangle, this triangle here, this one, this a triangular uh, OA. This is uh, IFOC divided by A and IFOC divided by D. Now take this triangle, OAB. You take this triangle, OAB. OAB calculate tan phi. So tan phi is nothing but what? Opposite side by hypotenuse. Okay. Tan phi is equal to one step I have skipped here. I'll, anyhow, I'll explain. Uh, uh, tan phi is equal to opposite side by uh, opposite side by adjacent side. So AB, tan phi is equal to AB divided by OA. AB divided by OA. But I want what? I want OA. Uh, listen here, AB divided by OA. But I want OA. So OA is equal to I can write now AB divided by tan phi. AB divided by tan phi. Likewise here OD. OD means uh, take this. Uh, this is a larger triangle. ODE. ODE. Take this triangle. ODE for sub circuit current. Likewise, if you take uh, OD is equal to uh, once again tan phi is equal to what opposite side by adjacent side. So OD is equal to once again it will be ED by tan phi. Here AB by tan phi. ED by tan phi. So the next step what will get? We'll get AB tan phi and ED. Tan phi. So one step I have skipped here. So OA is something about AB by tan phi. OD is something about ED by tan phi. So that is that may be almost equal to what? AB tan phi and ED into tan phi. Now AB tan phi, ED. So you can see here ED means uh, I can see here uh, ED. This is ED. ED you can see here ED is same as what? ED is same as your AC. You can see here ED is same as AC. Okay. So I can write instead of ED, I can write what here? I can write instead of ED, I can write AC tan phi. So uh, this I can write as what now? 1 divided by AC by AB. So tan phi, tan phi cancels. I can write uh, 1 divided by AC by AB. So now 1 divided by what is AC here? AC is something. Uh, what is uh, AC means what? This is AC. This is AC. Okay. What is AC now? For unit voltage on opposite circuit, AC, A, C. For unit voltage on rated circuit, uh, for unit uh, voltage on open circuit AC divided by corresponding for unit current on SAS circuit. What is corresponding for unit uh, on SAS circuit? It's something about your AB. Uh, what is something? SAS circuit, nothing but a, uh, AB. So AB means what? This is something about the corresponding SAS circuit AB. Okay. This is the corresponding for unit current on SAS circuit AB. And AC is something but per unit uh, current on open circuit. So 1 divided by per unit uh, voltage on open circuit, nothing but AC, and corresponding per unit current on SAS circuit. That's it. That is something but your AB. So uh, AC by AB, means AC by AB, open, uh, per unit voltage on open circuit divided by corresponding per unit uh, current on SAS circuit, that can be written as XT. Where XT is something but what? A direct, a direct axis. Uh, uh, reactants. XD is something what in I think in the signal which is you have learned uh, uh, regarding quadra uh, quadrature axis, uh, quadrature axis reactants and uh, direct axis reactants. So that can be written as what? 1 divided by XD. So thus the SAS circuit ratio is reciprocal of synchronous reactants XD. Synchronous reactants XD also called as or also you can tell as direct axis reactants. Synchronous reactants XD. For mod 1 turbo alternator, SCR is normally between 0 0.5 to 0 0.7. Uh, for uh, silent pole hydroelectric generator, SCR varies between 1 to 1.5. This is the SCR values, sir. The SCR values sir, uh, for the alternator, for turbo alternator and for the silent pole alternator. Okay, this is regarding normally the last uh, defined surface uh, ratio. And what are the effects of SCR on machine performance? This is regarding a sub circuit ratio uh, defined by what? 1 divided by XT. Uh, XT is something what? Per unit voltage on open circuit divided by corresponding per unit uh, current on sub circuit. This is regarding what you mean by SCR. But what are the effects of SCR on the machine performance? 
once again i'm telling this uh, these are all uh, some uh, standard uh, standard sentences uh, if you want uh, uh, really to understand you have to read that uh, sequence which is uh, book uh, and uh, read re regarding this what is uh, direct axis uh, reactants uh, what is quadrature axis reactants other things uh, you read on but uh, with respect to the ex examination uh, perspective view uh, just uh, go, go on these headings and you just uh, what you can put uh, this sentence don't worry about too much uh, the depth of theory just uh, reproduce the same sentence okay just uh, i'll uh, go through it uh, uh, just uh, line by line i'll go through it now effect of scr on the machine performance what is exactly mean by scr source circuit ratio so what uh, if you tell scr is uh, 1 or if you tell scr is uh, 1.5 then what will be the performance uh, what will be the machine performance so by mentioning the value of scr i can judge what will be the machine performance whether the re regulation is good whether the efficiency is good and uh, what will be the losses all those things i can i can what i, I can predict uh, by the by the certain value of scr now effect of scr on machine performance so machine performance i've taken a uh, five parameters these five parameters a normal voltage regulation, stability, parallel operation, star circuit current, and self excitation. So I've taken this five parameter, and what is the effect of SCR? What is the effect of SCR value on these uh, five parameters? Five parameters, because these are all uh, parameters uh, which will uh, show the performance of the machine. Let us, let us go one by one now. Voltage regulation. Uh, everyone knows that uh, voltage regulation should be as uh, less as possible. Uh, uh, if, if, the, if the regulation is within the uh, within less than five, means one to four, or within less than ten, it, it, it will be better. If, if the regulation is around uh, 55 percent or 60 percent, means your uh, machine is not perform uh, is not performing better. It's not performing good. Means uh, if uh, voltage regulation is more than 10 percent, means your machine is not good means there are more losses and efficiency is less of those things. So, now we are going to relate uh, this SCR with respect to the voltage regulation. Uh, everyone knows that voltage regulation should be lies within 1 to 5 or our worst case be be between 1 to 10. Okay. A low value of SCR means uh, the synchronous reactance has large value. Uh, I think earlier uh, last class uh, we had done that uh, sequencing power P max. If I go to last class, I showed that only question there. Uh, sequencing power p max uh, while well, explaining these things uh, here yeah. okay you can see here sequencing power of a synchronous machine p max is equal to what ev by xs where xs is the put your synchronous reactance okay synchronous reactance and this will go point by point test you know a low a low value of scr means the synchronous reactance has a large value a uh, large value means definitely if a synchronous reactance is large, definitely a synchronizing power will be less because synchronizing power will be equal proportional to synchronous reactance. So if you take a low value of SCR means the synchronous reactance will be very large, a uh, very large or uh, large value. Synchronous machine with low reactance SCR have a greater chances, uh, have greater changes in voltage under fluctuation of load that is inherent the water regulation of machine is poor. So Synchronous machines with low value of SCR have greater changes in uh, voltage under fluctuation of load. And uh, that is inherent voltage regulation of machine is poor. So if a synchronous machine, if you take synchronous machine with a low value of SCR, low value of SCR means based on these values, uh, either for turbo alternator or for silent pole machine, if you take low value of SCR, suppose this, uh, this range from 1 to 1.5, suppose if you take lesser than, uh, for, uh, for uh, silent pole, if you take lesser than 1, then what will happen? So uh, if you take a star than one, then uh, what will happen? Uh, there will be greater changes in voltage under if uh, there is a load fluctuation. So now you are uh, voltage. You are even if there is a load fluctuation, your voltage, your terminal voltage, uh, your alternator voltage will not change. But if you take low value of SCR, uh, what will happen? If there is a load fluctuation, then you definitely you are uh, voltage of your alternator, terminal voltage of alternator get varies. It should not happen. And along with that, uh, what will happen? The regulation of the machine will be poor. So regulation of the machine will be poor. So you can sum up that uh, if you take low value of SCR, then the voltage regulation will be poor. If you take a, a low voltage means less than one with respect to silent pole machine. So we have to select a SCR in such a way that the regulation and voltage stability and the voltage stability will be better. That is the meaning. Try to put same words. One or two sentences. Try to put same words. Next, stability. 
the machine with low value of scr as a low stability limit as a maximum uh, as a maximum output of the machine is inversely proportional to xt so once again we have one more equation if you go through the signals machines uh, theory we have one more equation like uh, p max uh, or power power, uh, power uh, delivered by the uh, signals machines given by p is equal to like uh, somewhat uh, 3 uh, 3 e not v divided by xt into sin delta that is nothing but your uh, uh, equation uh, for power delivered by the synchronous machine. Okay, once again, I'll repeat 3 V naught, uh, 3 E naught V divided by uh, XT into sin delta, where XT is nothing but your uh, direct axis reactance or asynchronous reactance, and E naught is nothing but open circuit voltage, and V is nothing but your terminal voltage, sin delta, delta is nothing but your rotor angle. Okay, that is the equation is given. So, a uh, machine with a low value of SCR as a low stability limit as maximum output of machine is inversely proportional to XT. So P max, P max is given by what? Uh, 3 V, uh, 3 E naught V divided by XT. So definitely a uh, synchronous uh, power or uh, power, deli uh, power uh, delivered by the machine will be inversely proportional to XT. So a, a machine with a low value of SCR as a low stability, as a low stability, as a maximum output machine is inversely proportional to XT. This, uh, uh, same thing as uh, same thing you can say here uh, with the low value of uh, SCR, uh, the stability of the uh, stability of the machine will be uh, less. So you have to select in such a way that the stability voltage regulation uh, should be as good as possible. That is one thing stability. So you, you can't use low value of SCR. Try to select within this region one to one point five. If you select uh, less than one for uh, silent, or if you select uh, less than point five. Uh, for turbo alternators, then uh, water regulation will not be good and your stability will not be good. Next, uh, come to parallel operation. And uh, last class I uh, discussed about parallel operation, uh, uh, where parallel operation, uh, certain conditions should hold good, like uh, frequency, volt, uh, uh, phase sequence, uh, and even the voltage uh, uh, should be remain safe. Okay, uh, for any alternator running in parallel, which is uh, connected to the grid. So based on that parallel operation, uh, you would like to link uh, the value of SCR uh, into that parallel operation. Machines with low SCR, low value of SCR are so difficult to operate in parallel because high value of XT gives a small synchronizing power. So if you want to operate the machines under low SCR, we know that Pmax is equal to, Pmax is inversely proportional to XT. So if you go for low value of SCR, uh, definitely it is difficult to operate. Because uh, if uh, if you go for low value of SCR, then the synchronizing power P max will become less as uh, uh, for the high value of XT. Means as XT increases, and then the P max decreases because both are inversely proportional. This condition will happen or it will prevail at what condition when the SCR is at low value. Okay. Uh, this power is responsible for keeping uh, machine syn uh, synchronism. Normally, the synchronizing power, what we calculate, Pmax, that will be responsible for uh, uh, responsible for keeping all the all the alternator in synchronism because all the alternator connected in parallel is connected to the grid. All are should be syn uh, synchronized. Means the voltage, phase angle, uh, frequency should be same. For that, uh, we should have vertical value of SCR. Okay. So if you take low value of SCR, then the, uh, then there will be effect on the synchronism. And even there will be effect, uh, there will be effect on the synchronizing power because synchronizing power is uh, proportional to XD. Or what will happen? This XD uh, direct axis reactance or uh, direct axis reactance increases. Okay, the parallel operation of the machines uh, will be uh, with high value of XD becomes more difficult uh, if they are interconnected to the transmission lines. So if the direct axis reactance is more, def uh, definitely the P max will be less. As synchronizing power will be less, then it will be, that will be very difficult to synchronize all the alternator uh, to maintain the synchronism which are connected to the grid. That will be difficult if you go for low value of SCR. That is the, what the meaning of this one. So the parallel operation of the machines with the high value of XG becomes more difficult if they are interconnected to the transmission line, which means they are interconnected to the grid. This is because uh, the impedance of the line generator between the generator as directly to the sum of the impedance of the machines. This, this increase in impedance acts to reduce the synchronizing power so that they are weakly held in synchronism. So, uh, for all the different types of alternators which are connected in parallel, if this uh, direct axis reactance increases, all these direct axis reactants will add on to the transmission lines. If they add on to the transmission lines, 
then indirectly what will happen the synchronism uh, indirectly the synchronism power decreases and that will uh, affect on synchronism between the alternator which are connected to the grid so that uh, finally you can sum up that uh, you have to select the value of scr in such a way that uh, it will uh, be helpful for the alternator to run in parallel uh, run in parallel which are connected to the grid and uh, synchronism should be maintained and there will be a sufficient synchronizing power so that uh, all the alternators are kept in synchronism. So if you go for low value of SCR, there will be loss in synchronism, there will be high value of XT and there will be low value of synchronizing power. That is the uh, exact, meaning of, uh, exact meaning of low value of effect of low value of SCR on the parallel operation. Likewise, come, uh, come for fourth one, short circuit current. You know that a short circuit waveform everyone knows. Uh, a small value of SCR indicates a small value of, uh, smaller value of uh, current under short circuit, and definitely a large value of SCR, uh, large value of SCR indicates the larger uh, larger value of short circuit, uh, short, uh, short circuit current. So, a small value of SCR indicates the smaller value of current under uh, short circuit uh, going to large value of sequence reactance. But uh, normally this is not a problem. Uh, short circuit current, uh, we have certain uh, we have certain operators, or certain arrangements so that uh, we can maintain the short circuit current. So if we go for uh, a larger value of SCR, the short circuit current may increase under circuit, short circuit condition. The short circuit current may increase. But we have several arrangements so that we can limit the short circuit current. So uh, we can go for instead of smaller value of SCR, we can go for what we can go for higher value of SCR. Such circuit current is uh, not a problem. Under such circuit condition, definitely this current increases, but that is not a problem. We have several arrangements so that this such circuit uh, conditions, uh, such circuit current can be limited. Instead of going for small value of SCR, you can go for higher value of SCR. <coughs> that is uh, one thing. It is regarding such circuit current. And here, uh, final uh, parameter uh, self excitation. So, <coughs> normally, we have to excite the field bending, uh, field bending of the rotor. Either it can be done by separately excited or it can be done by self excitation. Normally, uh, in alternator, we have self excitation. Uh, we, we have self excitation uh, where uh, uh, the power is uh, fetched from the input supply and then that is converted, uh, then that is converted to rectifier because uh, we require DC for the excitation of uh, field winding. So, to get field winding means uh, you, are you are taking self excitation system. We have a permanent magnet. Uh, we are going to collect the <coughs> voltage from the uh, three phase, uh, three phase of the So whatever they are going to give supply to the stator, from there we will tap out the uh, we will tap out supply, and we are uh, convert that AC into uh, DC part using the rectifier. Uh, from that uh, DC current, we are going to excite. We are going to or we are going to excite the rotor windings. Or if you want separately excitation system means, then uh, we require separate DC source. From the DC source, they have to excite the rotor voltage. So normally, they'll go for self excitation, where a certain arrangement is made within the rotor shaft so that uh, uh, the rotor voltage will be excited, taking power from the stator thermals. That is called as uh, self excitation. So now, what we'll uh, try to link the SCR value with respect to the self excitation. We have. Uh, let us you go one by one. Machine feeding uh, long transmission lines uh, should not be designed with a small SCR as this would lead to large voltages and open circuit produced, uh, produced by self excitation going to a large capacity current drawn by the uh, transmission lines. So since uh, we are going to tap the voltage from the stator terminals, uh, since that alternator is linked, uh, linked to the grid, uh, linked to the transmission lines, so what will happen, uh, so normally when you convert uh, that AC to DC, the large capacity current uh, uh, will be there. Uh, so that uh, what will happen? Uh, the large capacity current drawn by transmission lines. Uh, there will be there will be a large uh, current drawn by transmission lines. Then what will be the effect of this one? We have noted that the machine with the larger value of SCR has a higher voltage stability limit and low value uh, low value of inherent uh, regulation. On the other hand, higher value of SCR means high value of short circuit current. Also, the machine design with higher value of SCR as a uh, Long air gap, which means that the uh, MMF required for field is large, as it means having the air value of SCR is uh, costlier to build. So, uh, we can sum up that uh, for a self excitation system, uh, try to get the higher value of uh, SCR, means the lower, uh, lower value, of, if you go for lower value of SCR, uh, then definitely there is a possibility of uh, 
uh, uh, larger capacitive current uh, from the transfer transmission lines uh, to uh, so to get away from the problem uh, to go for higher value of SCR uh, for the higher stability limit and even uh, if you go for higher value of SCR uh, means that higher value of suspected current but uh, this suspected current can be limited by certain arrangements. So for uh, also for the division reason with higher value of SCR we have long air gap which means that MF required field is lost. Okay? So hence the machine having a higher value of SCR is costly to build. Even is costly to build that is okay but uh, keeping into consideration that uh, with respect to the uh, voltage stability, with respect to, with, with respect to the regulation, uh, with respect to the synchronism, uh, if you take all uh, those points into consideration, we can say that uh, the, the SCR uh, should be large. You can you can uh, you cannot go for low value of SCR. You have to maintain the at least uh, at least the large value of SCR such circuit ratio such that your machine will be operated in a better healthier conditions okay, these are uh, these are the what uh, uh, effect of scr on the machine performance machine performance means i have taken these five parameters don't forget about these five parameters what the regulation stability parallel operation source circuit current self excitation very much important question and uh, in, uh, in all the question paper it has been asked just you write these five parameters and so put on uh, three to four sentences here. So what I given here, I try to reproduce safe sentence and then it, uh, it will not be an issue. If you want to uh, have still uh, regarding uh, deep theory means uh, take that any as a machine book, sequence, uh, synchronous uh, motor or sequence machines, you just read them. I think it is not uh, required. Just go through the sentence and remember and try to reproduce, you know, that is enough. 